y'all know, mod to fame, fast as Hellcat, on the street, on nice. Draggy, 60 to 130, fast as Hellcat, 100 to 150, on Draggy, had the, nice. had the re record at Pocono. Next year, I'm coming for all the half-mile records. That's one nice. of those fast, Indiana, all of them. I'm coming for all the half-mile records. I'm going to own all of them shits, bro. I'm telling you right now, it ain't no Hellcat going to touch me. I hey. guarantee it, unless that bitch go, got to me, ain't touching me. Hey, go crazy. That's all I'm going to say, man. That's I appreciate it. it. Hey, That's it. Sure. I see y'all. Much love. Mod the fame. I'm out. Yes, it is going on, YouTube. I am back with another video, and I have a very special guest and a special video for you guys today. We're going to be talking about twin turboing a 392 and a Hellcat, and which one is more cost-effective, powerful, and the best platform to use. Let's get straight into it. You are watching a master at work. Loving my twin turbo flow. All right, you guys, you saw a few people who have a twin turbo Dodge, right? Now, I did include DDE, man. DDE, dang near twin turbos, everything they have from the SVJ, the Aventador, um, the F12, all of that, right? So if you're interested in twin turbo, make sure you check them out because they do it often, right? Um, but we got a special guest, man, Mod to Fame. If you don't know who that is, man, he is a definite goat when it comes to the Dodge community and the YouTube car community as well, man. If you haven't, I'll leave his info right here, man. Um, I actually met him in Dallas at the YouTuber event. We kept in contact, man, and a real humble dude. He ended up getting me to come out to Myrtle Beach to shoot the promo video. Um, and ever since then, man, he's definitely been a, a huge part of my success in YouTube, a mentor, a supporter, all of it, man. So definitely shout out to him. We're going to be talking to him. He has a one of one, about to be one of two, right? twin turbo hellcat right and you're like well why does he boost a already boosted car you know all this other stuff we'll get into that so make sure you tune in i actually had him on my instagram live yesterday so we're gonna actually play that here shortly but if you're new to the channel man you guys know i do everything car related car mods car meets anything right and of course everything 1320 happens on this channel we're leaving from memphis this weekend for scary fast so you're gonna see me race a few people man so make sure you stay tuned in on the channel this entire week next week all of that tune in but let's get straight to it pro road 704 what's up man you brother hey you, brother. let me let me go ahead and start off and say i appreciate you taking the time man because i know what it's like to be busy man I know what it's like to be successful on top of that. Hey, man. Hey, look, man. We all do the same thing, brother. We all work. We all got to do what we got to do to feed our families. Yeah. For and sure. Uh, for sure. the only thing that's different about me is the fact that in addition to that, I also run a business. So yeah. Yeah. that's where, sure. that's where the time crunch comes in. And sure. within that business is multiple businesses. Yeah. But you know what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. The pillars, man. Yes, sir. There you go. There yes, you sir. go. Yes, sir. Um, there. So, so uh, that's the challenging part. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to take too much of your time, man. I'm going to get kind of right to it. And for people who are on my live that don't know what's going on, uh, this is my to fame, man. If you have not checked out his channel, you're probably asleep. I don't know what you're doing, but check out my man's channel. Um, I'm gonna let you be surprised. Or maybe you just don't like. Maybe you just don't like going fast. Maybe you yeah, just like yeah, sliding. You know, or yeah. No, you know. But um, definitely go check him out. This is somebody who you know I've looked up to for a while, and, and definitely has become a mentor. Man, he he knows what he's doing, man. So go check him out. But appreciate it. Outside of that, you guys, if you've been kind of keeping up with my channel, you've been seeing that I've posted not only what I've gotten done to my car already. But what's in the future and some of the boost applications that you can do to these Dodge cars, right? Um, so if you don't know, this guy right here has a one of one, right? One of one twin turbo. Hey, hey I can't manual. say that. I can't say that no more. I There's can't no? say that no more. It's just the six. I don't know if his started yet. 
But oh, he is named man. officially the second Twin Turbo Manual Hellcat. So I can't say I'm one on one no more. All right, well, we're going to say he ain't got no oil pressure, so it don't count right now. Um, okay. okay. So we're we going to um, – but the twin turbo Hellcat, man, um, yes, you know, pushing – I've seen it at 1,100. I've seen it at 1,400 horsepower, but just know it's fast, right? You, it's you're fast. Not, you're not, and, it's, and it's street drivable, you guys, so that's, that's what's crazy. 100% street car. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this, like I said, about the whole channel – um, I'm going to be dropping a video about twin turboing a 392 or a Hellcat and the process and what it costs, all kinds of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I got somebody that I, I can reach out to and say, hey, I've done it. These are the pros and cons, and this is why I did it, right? Um, so I really only have three or four questions for me. And then, of course, you know, I'll let, let you go about your day, my brother. But the first thing is, man, why did you decide to go twin turbo on an already boosted Hellcat? <laughs> Great question. Um, one, it was because, truthfully, YouTube was one of the main reasons. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, I, I've seen it all done with the stock supercharger, everything that you could do, yeah. um, which is upper pulley, lower pulley, everything to make E85, ported blower, um, whether it's a snout, bearing plate. I've done it all. I had it all. So yeah. I, I did all of that to my car. And the car at that time made about 940 to 950 wheel. It was quick, 60 to 130. The car was consistent, high fives. Cool. And uh, 100 to 150, the car was mid fives mm. with that setup, making that amount of power. Yeah. And it was quick. It was reliable. And, you know, but it's what everyone with a Hellcat has. Yep. So... Uh, all right, what do we do to be different? What do we do to push the envelope? And I was really surprised at the lack of people who decided to go twin turbo, uh, mainly because uh, it's such an efficient setup. Yeah. To, in order to make the power that the Hellcat does, it uses a supercharger, and the supercharger has a certain thing called parasitic draw, yeah. meaning what it does is it, it utilizes the lower pulley, which is the crank, in order to turn that through the party. Yeah. And uh, what I found was that it takes anywhere from about 80 to 90 horsepower just to turn the supercharger. So you lose 80 to 90 horsepower by having that blow. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, not only do you have that 80 to 90 horsepower, you have the thing called heat that compressed air makes. Yeah. And in a root style supercharger, because it's right on top of the motor, yeah. you've got the heat from the engine rising, and then you have the supercharger itself that generates its own heat. So you just have, you get this thing called heat soak with superchargers and get it bad. Yeah. And then you lose power because you're generating really high intake air temperatures that go into the motor. And Hellcats are really smart. At around 150 degree IATs, they start pulling timing to save yeah. itself. And with a motor that even with a, let's say you have a, a Mishimoto or one of the thermostats that's 180 degrees, the motor's yep. all at 180. So if the motor's already at 180, your blower's right on top of that. Trying to keep it below 150 is really, that's, really hard. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. So uh, by moving, removing that supercharger, um, what I did was the turbos are, are underneath. So yep. they don't get the heat from the motor. Um, it gets fresh air from the bottom where it's at, uh, being a mid-mount turbo kit. Yep. And I freed up almost 100 horsepower just by taking off the blower. So for an example, at 15 pounds of boost, Hellcats that are upper pulley, which is usually a 285 upper pulley, makes okay. about 15 pounds of boost. On 93 octane, they make 750 to 760 wheel horsepower. My car on 15 pounds of boost, 93 octane, makes 950 wheel horsepower. So it makes 200 more horsepower on yeah. the same boost. Yep. Okay. So that's and it, and, and it makes and it makes sense, right? Like that's the crazy part. Like you know, to to really wrap your head around it. Um, yeah. So I guess if if you had to think with this next question, it may be tough, right? What is the biggest pro and con with your setup that you face right now? 
I'm going to start with the cons. Um, the biggest cons with my setup is hell, Hellcats are super smart. Um, they uh, use, well, if your car is a 17 and up, it uses uh, speed density for its, and this is getting real nerdy, right? But yeah, yeah, it I uses speed sure. density, which uses four different map sensors on the blower to determine what, how much air it's receiving, so how much time to give, how much fuel to dump. And what happens is those parameters are set by a supercharger. Yeah. So it's looking for that type of air, that type of delivery. So the biggest con is helping the car to relearn using those same map sensors. If you want to stay stock computer, yeah. you run into a lot of tuning issues when going to turbos with a Hellcat. Yeah. So just a little just a little nugget. If your car is a three ninety two or if it's a five seven, you're not gonna have those issues. Okay. Okay. Well, wait, so that's wait. the biggest that's the biggest con. Also the second biggest con is launching. Um if you have an automatic transmission, uh, it is really hard to be able to stall the car up to the RPM that it needs to make boost. Um, yeah. In most cases, the car doesn't start making real any real boost till about 4,000 RPM. Um, your factory stall converter is somewhere around 2,000. So that yeah. means as you're trying to get to that 4,000, you start pushing through the brakes. Yeah. Um, however, there are some tricks to the trade that I have been learning and I will be applying and putting in videos how to launch a twin turbo car to get it to lead like that supercharged car, supercharged car does. Yeah. So yeah. that's the that's the second biggest con launch. So first biggest con tuning it, second biggest con launching it. Um, yeah. The pros though, oh my <laughs> god, I love I love Hellcats. I love the supercharger, but after driving my car, bro, when I drive Hellcats now, it's with like the supercharger. Yeah. Initially, it feels like it's gonna be the fastest thing in the world. And then right around 5,000 RPMs, it feels like you hit a brick wall. Like, it yeah. just stops accelerating. So it's like, it accelerates really, really fast. And then at the top end, it just feels like it's like, <gasps> <gasps> like, it feels like it can't breathe the way that it yeah. needs to to keep accelerating. And once you get experienced turbos, you know how they talk about freight train? Yeah. Turbos keep accelerating. No yeah. matter, if, as long as you go going up that RPM range, they, they just keep pushing harder and harder and harder the car accelerates more and more and more so that's that's a huge pro another huge pro is the efficiency um the fact that you can make so much power with so little effort um at 20 pounds of boost on my hellcat when i was upper lower pulley it was 21 pounds of boost 21 degrees of timing 940 horsepower 950 wheel my car on 20 pounds of boost with 14 degrees of timing 14, not 21, not 20, not even 19, 14 yeah. degrees of time. The car made 1140 wheel power. So that's <laughs> like, hey. so as far as, as far as making power, like you cannot beat, you cannot beat the efficiency of turbos, bro. You can't yeah. beat it. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm learning that a little bit. I got a friend, I got to shout him out, man. Uh, Cody. Uh, he used to have a scat pack, and he just got in a F90 M5, a V8 twin turbo. And Can't beat it. I'm sitting here. I spent the same amount of money that he did and only gained a certain amount of horsepower to his, like, 200. It was ridiculous. 100%. You know, so I'm starting to learn 100%. more and dive into the turbo game, and, and that's why yeah. I'm making this so video. Just to recap, just to recap cons, uh, tuning. It takes a lot of time to get turbos dialed in. Yeah. Um, I'm in the process of trying to dial in uh, a charger, twin turbo that I'm working on right now. Um, it also takes a lot of, it's a different driving style. Yeah. And you, it takes a lot of time to relearn how to drive a car. Yeah. And like he, like the owner of that car is still learning how to drive it. Like mm. it takes a lot. So basically you could potentially lose to a slower car if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah, you know what I'm for saying? Sure. For sure. So, you know, when I first started, that's, I was in the same boat. So yeah. it, it just takes time. So tuning and learning how to drive it. Yeah, and that's Dig Kitty is is his Instagram name. I Dig think Kitty. is that right? Yep. Yeah, Dig so. Dig Nathan, uh, yeah, Dig Nathan Kitty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that's his so, call. 
Fast car up top. Oh my yeah. god. Above 100 miles an hour? Ridiculous. Well, see, I, Below I, 100 miles an hour? Spin city. Spin I mean, city. Even with his four stars? Because, I mean, he runs the same setup. Or, well, I kind of have the same setup you do when it comes to the, the wheels. Yeah, but he has, a, he has Mickey Thompson ET Street SS. Um, and those are not Street R's. Yeah. Street R's, they hook, they go. Yeah, you SS, they don't have got it like that. For sure. This car is oh. making way too much power for his wheel and tire setup. Oof. That's when you know you're fast. Oh. So yeah, yeah. I guess the, the biggest thing, and, and I think for a lot of people, when they go into building these cars, they don't understand what really goes into it. And, I mean, shout out to Intrek and all the people that deal with yours, man. And, and hey. uh, I, uh, I literally got on the phone with somebody today, and it's crazy. He just put a Hellion twin turbo kit on his 392 and got yep. it back. And it, it's a paperweight right now. It doesn't turn on. Like, he's already having issues with it, right? So I lead with that to ask you, if you could go back and do one thing different, is there something you would do different with your setup? Or, like, is there something that if you would have known beforehand, you wouldn't have done to save money or, or headache, anything like that? Yep, yep. Um, great question. Um, there is nothing I could have done different with my setup yeah. because there was no blueprint to follow. So – I'm creating, I am creating the blueprint for the street car twin turbo Hemi. Yeah. Like for, as a street car that's drivable, works fast, runs, like no issues. Dig Kitty, his car, he been driving that thing to work every day. Like normal. <laughs> 93 hey, gas. No way. <laughs> everything. So granted, there's still some more work to do. There's still some more learning of driving on his part. The car works like it works yeah. like a normal car. And that was always the benefit with modifying a stock 392 or a stock Hellcat. Like the drivability, you didn't lose it. And yeah. by going to Twin Turbo, you think you would lose all that drivability. But when you have the right tuner who works with you, you guys learn together, you, you get through the hiccups together. Um, once the once this blueprint is created, bro, these it's cars old. in a in a year or two, they're yeah. gonna be out here like littered. It's gonna be twin turbo, just like Mustangs. Yeah, there's twin turbo Mustangs everywhere now. But there was somebody who started that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Who really yeah. started that trend? Yeah. So for Hemi, for Hemi's, I've been that person that started that trend. There's been twin turbo Hemi's long before me, but they were all race cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were all yeah. meant to get off a trailer. Do a pass in a quarter mile. So you have no idea what that car drove like. Mm -hmm. You have no idea if that car actually performs as a regular car. You yeah. have no idea. So I'm the first one that's like actually doing like a street car, fully functional car that actually works. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's nothing really I could have done differently. But to answer your question, knowing what I know now, um, uh, with turbos, there are so many places to lose boost. So many okay. places. It could be from the vacuum lines. It could be from where the couplers are. It could be from boots. It could be from so many places. And uh, I had to learn that on a stage in front of everybody. So it's like I would get somewhere and my car wouldn't perform the way I know it performs. And, you know, I, I did that in front yeah. of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. but that's part of making a blueprint, right? You, you know, yeah. you get there. So, one thing, I would have a boost leak tester kit. As okay. soon as I finish the kit, the first thing I would do is test for boost leaks. Um, the, the, the second thing that I think that I might have done differently, I don't know. There's not really much I could have done different <laughs> at this point. Uh, okay. I would have stayed quiet longer as I figured it out. Okay. Instead okay. of bringing I can feel bringing, that. I'm a very transparent person, yeah, but at the sure. same time, sure. That backfires in a in a public eye. When you do it in a public eye, it backfires that transparency because you know you come out and you say I got this killer, and then when that killer don't perform the first time, it's like ah yeah they own it. So no matter how much no matter how much you advance and get better and better and better and faster and faster, yeah. all they remember is that first that, time. that first time. So you know people that don't do this stuff in the public eye, your friend who you said has a paperweight, when his car is working in a, in six weeks, nobody knew it was a paperweight. Yep. So they they not going to come at him. You know what I'm saying? Yep. They don't know that. For sure. 
But uh, this boy, the reason why I call the paperweight is because he's working with people who don't know how to get through the hiccups and the issues and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I decided that I am going to potentially start consulting with people who want to do these builds. Um, so that's a little exclusive. A little yeah, exclusive. For sure. Check that yeah. out for sure. For sure. Because like literally Dig 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 Nation was in the same, to give you an example, he was in the same boat. Um, his car got finished. They installed this nice motor in terms of it's a piston and rod built, built bottom, stock top. So it's yeah. pistons, rods, billet main caps, nice, nice bottom end built. Yeah. Uh, it's a Helion twin turbo kit. Yeah. Uh, it has a GT 86, I think, turbos or something like that. Or whatever the good uh, Garrett's are, he has those. So he has all the best things, right? Yeah. All the best stuff. But his car wouldn't run. It wouldn't idle. It wouldn't stay running. And, you know, they were looking at all these different things that could be wrong with it. Uh, is it a vacuum issue? Is it a this issue? And this went on for a month. Yeah. Until until the owner of Intrack was like, yo, Steph car's running. So let's just get Steph on this. So literally, uh, he called me, yo, Steph, I need your help. If he asks me for my help, I'm going to give him the help. Yeah, for sure. Needless to say, you know, within a couple weeks uh, of me going back and forth with my team, putting him on a job, and me sorting through the issues that I recognized because I had those issues. Yep. It's called been running ever since. 3,000 miles later, been running ever since. So it's invaluable having someone that knows because they went through it yeah. to show you what to do and what not to do. You know what I'm saying? And I wish if I could do this shit all over again. Oh, that's the perfect thing. If I could do this shit all over again, I would wait for somebody else to do the shit first. I <laughs> But but that's what makes you you, and that's what that's what everybody got to understand. Y'all got to put some respect on this man's name. Like y'all don't understand. Like I made a comment on this page the other day, like how monumental it is for Hellcats, let alone Dodge as a whole, right? Like there's just, I don't think there's anybody doing what you're doing, let alone taking people with you, right? And that's one of the biggest things I learned from you when we yeah. met was like taking people with you and the fact that you putting your brand yeah. out there to let everybody see, and then. Well, I'm putting everything on the line, bro. Yeah. My name, my brand, everything on the line. And Dodge ain't my daddy. They ain't even yeah. my cousin. I don't yeah. get nothing for this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For sure. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know how else not to be open, transparent, and just share, share sure. what it is. You feel? For sure, man. And that's and and like I can't do nothing but be in awe, man. Like like I said, it's one of those things that, 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 that like I've always looked up to it and and you play a role in what's about to happen to my car. Like, you know, it, it's one of those oh. things I'm sitting there watching. And we're we going to get there sooner or later. Like, I'm hoping that by the time, you know, March, April comes around for our Myrtle Beach event, that I'll have something that, that you can be like, yeah, like I had my hand in that. Like, yeah, like I yeah. did that. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll be honest with you, man. I feel like uh, I'm about to have my hands in a lot of uh, Hellcat builds. Twin turbo and otherwise. Right now, in my driveway, I have Darren G, SRT's uh, Hellcat in my driveway right now because his car wasn't moving like that. So I had to put drag on tuning on the job. Yeah, shout out <laughs> to them. They just joined too. That's crazy. To get the, to get the, to get it, to get it moved, bro. I'm telling you, man. You, this shit is impossible without somebody behind the keys getting it to all work. It's impossible. Sure. It's impossible. You should, sure. Your shit gonna be a brick forever if you don't hey. have the right people on the keys. No, for sure, man. And you know, it's crazy what YouTube kind of bring people around and, and social media as a whole. But anyways, man, uh, I don't want to keep you for long. That was that was my three, you know, main questions. And then of course, All having good, you on, on the channel is is huge, man. Uh, will you be in Memphis? Is the question. Hey, scary fast. I will yeah. see y'all there. I am hey. posting. I'll be on the mic shouting everybody out. We in Memphis this weekend at the scary fast. Come race your car. Come collab. Come, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's always a good time. That's always a really good event. Demonology versus Dawn Master. But honestly, it's not even about them. It's about everybody else that comes out, man. A lot of people always experience a really nice boost from coming to that event. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Socially. And uh, it's, a, it's just a good event overall. 
I did right. want to um just I had dropped a nugget earlier that I wanted to go back to, and that is, uh, if I could do it again, would I do it with a Hellcat? Because oh. you said, why would you do that? Why would you do that with a Hellcat? Because yeah. it's already you know. Boom. If I could do it again, knowing what I know now, if we think about it, my car no longer has a supercharger. Um, it is no longer a Hellcat bottom end. It's a 426 bottom end. Yep. Also pistons and rods. Stop, stop Hellcat heads. But I believe the 392s have the same heads. I don't yep. think there's anything different. Yep. Same so head. basically, if I could do it all over again, what hey. I think I would do is I would do it with a 392. I would drop a piston and rod combination in it. I would... Uh, get a custom intake manifold like what I have now, yeah. and then I wouldn't have to worry about uh, making the Hellcat computers work. Yeah, um, with turbos, it would just be a matter of it would be regular tuning uh, in a car, turning it to a force induced car. So yeah. if I could do it all over again, I would. It would. It wouldn't make no additional power because it's a Hellcat. That don't yeah. matter at that point because now once you forge the bottom end, change the intake manifold. And put turbos on it. It ain't no you here, too, no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good. You out of here. You good. You turn, turn that motherfucker boost up. <laughs> yeah, we go. We go. That's it, man. That's it. That's so up, man. that was one thing. And the second thing I wanted to address is compound boost. I because I've been seeing this a lot. Yep. Um with the whole compound boost. The reason why people do compound boost, number one reason why people do compound boost, especially with Hellcats, is it's easy. It's easy. Because you're not changing anything. All the mass yeah. sensors are still in the right place. It still delivers the boost through the supercharger. Yeah. So there's no, like, complications and retuning and all that. It's just tuning for a little bit more air. It's, like, just a little more boost. So it's like adding a, a smaller pulley, basically. So okay. it's a lot easier doing a compound boost setup, right? Uh, but the reason why I would never do a compound boost setup is because it ain't going to ever make no real power. Yeah. Real power is relative, right? It'll make a thousand wheel, but that's gonna be about the limit. A yeah, thousand, yeah. thousand forty will kind of be the limit because the blower is gonna always act as a restriction. Not only that, you still got that oven on top of your motor, and now you're gonna force more compressed air into that oven. We gotta make more compressed air, and it's just gonna make a lot of heat. Um, and honestly, the power you can make with a compound boost, to me. It's a little bit of a waste because you can make that same power by doing pulleys. Yeah. <laughs> basically, you can yeah. basically make that power doing pulleys. So to me, what's the point of spending, you know, ten thousand uh, dollars doing compound boost when you can make that same power? The only benefit, another benefit to compound boost is you don't have the issues with launching the car because you yeah. still have the supercharger. You got the instant torque. Right. All that's going to happen is in a race with a car with turbos, you're just going to get freight train. Yeah, yeah, you better get one. <laughs> you better get one. Bro, let me tell you, any compound boost car would never want to lane with me. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever, ever, never. It will, Bro, they will get the life dragged out of them. <laughs> I, I, I ain't mad at that, man. I am not mad at that. And, and it's crazy. I've learned a lot in a 15-minute convo, right? So – um, who knows? That's man. it, brother. You, you may have my car in your driveway sooner or later. We're gonna we're gonna find. Nah, nah, I ain't gonna man. be doing this. I ain't hey. gonna be doing this. I said I'm gonna do consulting. I ain't gonna be taking. Listen, I love them. <laughs> That's my guy, hundred percent. But I I every week gotta smack him upside the head. Hey. I'm like, yo, who you talking? To? You know I'm out the fame, right, nigga? What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> for sure, for sure. I ain't bro. dealing with people in their cars, uh -uh. but hey. I will tell you what's what's the best thing to do. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. So if you're interested in twin turbos, man, sooner or later, this guy's going to be the guy for that. So Hell yeah. Make sure, Hell make, yeah. Sure, make sure you lock in, man. My defame, you guys. I can't thank him enough, man. So make sure you check him out. I appreciate you for taking the time, man. And yes, sir. you'll see this video on YouTube. And of course, I'll see you yes, later, man. So, yeah, as a recap, just so y'all know, my defame, fastest Hellcat on the street, on hey. Draggy, 60 to 130. Fastest Hellcat, hundred to one fifty on Draggy. Had the hell, had the re record at Pocono. Next year, I'm coming for all the half mile records. That's one of those fast. 
Indiana, all of them. I'm coming for all the house nine records. I'm gonna own all of them shits, bro. I'm telling you right now, it ain't no Hellcat gonna touch me. Hey. I guarantee it. Unless that big go, guy touch me, he ain't touching me. Hey, go crazy. That's all I'm gonna say, man. That's I appreciate it. it. Hey, That's it. Sure. I see y'all. Much love. Mod the fame. I'm out. Yes, sir. <laughs> So there you have it, man. I had a, a nice 20 minute convo with the man himself, my to fame. Um, it's, it's somebody who has been as open as possible when it comes to this build, man, and, and transparent. And you guys got to understand that is one of the bravest things you can do on the internet, man, because you got people who swear they know it all, things of that nature. And he went a route that not many people have gone. He is the first one to do it. He is setting the blueprint, right? Um, so you got to give him respect on that. Um, and I also have to shout out my guy Cody or Cody Too Clean on YouTube. He has a twin turbo V8. And what I'm learning as I'm kind of getting to know his car and he's learning his car himself is that the twin turbo V8 is, is hard to beat, man. Street wise, it is, it is a beast, man. So I think turbos are the future, right? Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, you can turn up boost a whole lot better because those turbos just keep going. Like my defame said. Uh, so I think in the future, I think those four cylinder cars and stuff like that are going to be the new race cars outside of the electric cars. Man, hear me out, because with those turbos, you can boost up anything no matter the cylinder, right? You got Hondas with big turbos that make the same power as Hellcats, right? So um, to address something he did say, though, because in the title, you can see 392 and Hellcats and which one is a better platform. You heard him say, right? He would rather start with a 392 versus a Hellcat because he ended up taking off the Hellcat supercharger anyway um, because of the loss of power and what he actually gained from taking it off. Um, and I think it's cool to have a dual setup like that or compound boost, all that good stuff. But I did learn something in that convo and you kind of max out at the thousand wheel horsepower, right? And it's and it's something for him, man. He's touching 1400 wheel on a car that it set records everywhere man so if you didn't catch that man go replay that go watch he has set records multiple on draggy at pocono raceway and you saw he's coming for every half mile record as well um so for me you guys already know what route i'm going with the car yes i you know i consider twin turboing especially seeing the the super b that is at mass acceleration um but that is a trailered one pass and down car man it's not streetable um, and I just don't think that's the route I want to go. Like if I'm going to buy a, a turbo car, I think I'm going to get it from the, the factory, like a BMW, like a Mercedes, you know, something of that nature. Um, and then down pipe stage two, all this other stuff to get the power that I want, uh, which, uh, you know, I think Cody is extremely happy with his M5. Um, I think he definitely made the right move on that. But outside of that, man, let's get into something that's super important. And then we're going to close this thing out. So you guys, you guys need to know when it comes to building a 392, when you add any sort of power, it is probably best to build the bottom end. And you heard my Defame say Dignation Kitty and a couple other guys that he has their cars or has has his hands in have built the bottom end, right? Um, to be able to handle the power that it has. Shout out to Intrek Tuning, all of those guys um, that have been taking care of these one of two and three cars that they're trying to build man it's it's definitely something to put some respect on um but i think it's important to know when whenever you put a turbo kit on your car you want to have somebody that knows what they're doing right this is something that does not cost a thousand dollars right i have a friend who just put a helium twin turbo kit on his car and you heard me say it's a paperweight right and you know he drove it back and got a you know two hours down the road and the car completely killed itself died you know, and, and that's a struggle after you pay a really good amount for work on a car, man. And, and I understand that. And it's it's always, you know, it's it's always when, not if it's going to break, right? It, especially when you start talking, you know, high horsepower numbers. Um, and it's it's hard to do in the in the public eye, right? Um, now, I did help him get a tune set up for him um, yesterday. He actually had one remote remotely sent. Um, and it actually helped his car run a little bit better, um, but I'm pretty sure he's going to have to take it back and get some things set up. Um, and who knows, he may run into Mod of Fame. I may kind of put him in contact and see what he's doing because he's running the same kit as Dignation Kitty. So outside of that, man, if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Like I said, we're going to see Mod of Fame in a week. We're going to see Demonology, Dunk Master, E-Vapors, Rails. All of those guys are going to be on the channel. So make sure you lock in the rest of this week and next because I'm going to be dropping nothing but bangers you guys um but hopefully you learned a little bit 
about what the twin turbo setup is for a Hellcat. Um, the 392, you guys need to understand, is the same thing without the blower. We have the same heads, all of that good stuff. Yes, you will have to build your bottom in for a twin turbo setup. And I prefer the mid setup, not in the hood, because again, you're going to get the heat and then you might have to do, you know, hood cutouts, stuff like that. I'm not a fan of that look. So each their own though, right? Um, but outside of that, again, make sure you lock in, make sure you subscribe, all of that good stuff, man. And again, thank you, my fame for coming to the channel. And that is a wrap.